going the right way. It's gonna be great, gonna be a good day. This is Jason Lauren on Melbourne's Nova 100. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday. Good morning. Hello. Hello. Clint. Good Hello. morning, Lozzy. Clint Stanaway. Uh, you had a late night last night working. <sighs> And I tried to go down in solidarity with you because you were hosting Roland Garros. Ooh, Roland Garros 2024. So I watched. Is that from French Paris. Terrace? French tennis? It is. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I watched. And? I was bored. <laughs> <laughs> no. So Look. I turned it off. There weren't many people there. It was a miserable day yes. in Paris. My, uh, my wife and I flicked on the coverage for a second. No. And, it, and then uh, it sparked up a conversation and a decision we've made. Mm. You're going to Paris? No. Nope. You we're love croissants. Tennis lessons. We're joining a tennis club. Yeah, oh. awesome. What's what's that? Did you play? I you, used to. Good to get tennis lessons. When I was about fourteen, I used to do tennis lessons on a Wednesday afternoon. Double handed. Tennis backhand. is a great social sport, but you, you, it's an interesting time to start joining a tennis club as we approach winter. <laughs> Good call. Well, Fridays are the day we are childless. Oh yeah. Yes. So we're thinking like mixed a, doubles. No, nah, well, we'll just we're gonna go just do her, some lessons her together, and I, or just have a hit. And then uh, and then battle it out. Battle just, just social. Battle of the sexes. Do you think it'll? I think you'd be better to just the two of you go and have a coach and have like a good session yeah, together. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because you've been trying to have a playing... good session together for a long time. I know time. that's why I thought you should bring in a coach. Gotcha. Mm. Right. Have you got right. a racket? You're saying suggest so a third. Mm. I'm with you. Um, no, I probably need to update the racket. Okay. They're not wood anymore, are they? <laughs> They're not wood anymore. <laughs> They're not. You might have to return that one to Yvonne <laughs> Gorgon Crawley. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. I love her. I do too. She's a hoot. Special person She's as well. great. She's so funny. Yeah. Is it concerning doing sport with a partner? Yeah. Like, could it end badly? Yeah, that's why I said. Don't do that. Right. Paul and I can't play it. Well, we, we played tennis a lot a while ago when we were living in Byron, but I don't, it would always have to be mixed doubles. Or if he and yeah. I just went to have a hit, he's just too strong. Yeah, like, see, I, 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 I just can't. You'll find this hard to believe, but I get competitive. Mm. Why well, don't you just team up and play mixed doubles against another couple? What, nail some oldies? That's oh, fun. Not, what? Like there's some oldies at the tennis oh, club there. Nail, yeah, because like, he beat them. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Not flashing to the after party. Um, we um, we played Monopoly on our honeymoon and it didn't end well. Yeah, no, couples shouldn't play games against each other. Right, okay. It's dangerous territory. All right, maybe we'll do mixed doubles. Thanks for the I suggestion. Think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. mixed doubles nice, is so lovely. fun. Yeah, are you still doing it? You joined a little tennis club, didn't you? No, I played a lot in Byron, but I haven't since I've come back to Melbourne. But my family are all members at Kuyong, so I played the That's other, right. the like last week we did doubles, not mixed doubles. It was my mum and I versus my auntie and cousin, the gals. If I'm just going to a local tennis club, I don't have to wear the whites, do I? Depends we what tennis say, club. We should say yes. <laughs> imagine, yeah. imagine what he'd look like. Full white, waddling in in white. Depends what tennis club. Some are stricter than others. Yeah, no, this one's pretty dodgy. bands on the wrists. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> hope they have a canteen. Um, hey, big show t- uh, today, guys. We've got Probe the Popo. Ooh, I heard the dog squad's coming in. Yes. But there's so been did much I. show you, debate. Did you pockets? Uh, yep, yep, bought new clothes. <laughs> there's been much find anything on this. debate over what kind of dogs we're having in. Are they the attack dogs, the German Shepherds? Uh, or are they the sniffer dogs that look for the bananas at the airport? No, they're like like... They're drug mix. dogs. Or are they drug hybrid. dogs for like, festivals? Like, no, they're, they're all of them. No, I don't think so. I don't think they're multi-skilled, the dogs. The, the dogs aren't on drugs. That's not what you meant, is it? No, they sniff out the drugs at yes, festivals. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the ones that attack. Because yeah. I'd love to put Jace in one of those funny suits. I have been. Go, yeah, you've done it before, Sick of It is terrifying. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, where well, you run it long and like, you've got the fiberglass arm and they get on your arm. Mate, it feels like they're going to rip it out of its socket. Really? Wow. Yeah, it's, it's so I'm on. still confused. What sort of dog is coming in? Brody, what sort of... You watch. It'll probably be a bloody... Sausage it's dog. a baby German Shepherd. Oh, don't. Oh, that'll I take love a toe baby off. German Shepherds. So is it a search dog? That's an attack dog. That's Yeah, that's full attack. It is an attack dog, but slash search dog, so oh. it can find people. Yeah, but so what it they finds do, you they and make... then it lets them off the chain and goes, bring them down. Yeah, but you also, like, they would say, we'll go to their house and the dog will sniff so they get the scent and then they can track it, yeah. track the runaways. We, we had the idea about hiding Clint in the building and mm. we are going to get the dog to find him and... <laughs> How are we gonna? What, what are we gonna well, have? I, on I there? said we should cover you in honey. I thought it was one of the, the food sniffing. Oh. Dogs. You can cover yourself in honey, but I don't think that helps. Happy to. Okay. But maybe we Peanut should get butter. the dog to sniff your jacket and then try and find you hiding somewhere in the office. <laughs> yeah, if you want to coat peanut butter on yourself, you do that. Okay. Yeah. 
That's going to be interesting. Yeah, the dogs love okay, it. so the police are coming in. Behave yourselves. Cops are coming in. Probe the paper. Where's always, makes, always makes me nervous. Uh, not only that, a cafe in Melbourne has just started doing something which has fired people up. We're yeah, I was mad about it, actually. Yeah. And I don't get mad about a lot. We're going to... Well, that's untrue. We're going to get to <laughs> that a little bit later on. Uh, Keita Alexander is our latest artist to take the Nova Red Room. You can yes. win your exclusive invites this morning. Uh, it's one of those special up close and personal events. You I love Keita Alexander. Buy your way into this. You can only score an invite. And we're going to give you a chance later on this morning. I introduced you to Keita, and you've become a bit of a fan, have you? Oh, yes. Oh, is he somewhat obsessed? Yeah, he's into her. She's I'm, awesome. I almost bumped one of her photos. Did you do a deep stalk on the ground? Low down on the ground. How low are we talking? We're talking yes. low. Oh, no. Yeah. You did a big stalk on the ground. Just question. Accidentally double tapped. Mm. If I double tap. And you undouble tap, they don't. If they've got notifications on, it pops up, but it disappears if you take it off. So it's, a, it's still a risk. You're running the gauntlet. Yeah, because if they see it at the time, it's like, oh, hello. There's nothing better than someone showing me like. A photo, like the, an Instagram of someone they like, and you double tap. That's really mean. People, you shouldn't do that. You watch them go into a panic. Yeah, it's mm. mean. You're such a mean person. I'm not mean. That's mean. That's not fun. That's mean. That's cheeky. It's mean. It's not nasty. Mean. Not a bit nasty. Can I have a look at your phone? Absolutely not. <laughs> you can't look at anything of mine. In fact, look the other way. <laughs> hey, um, coming up next, Lozzie. I did the ultimate a lazy gal thing, but I think Clint's going to like it. Oh. Yeah, you'll appreciate it. We'll go there next on Nova. Um, <laughs> guys, the other day I told you I went to my GP to get some blood test results. Mm. And uh, he said I was low in something, which I can't even pronounce. That's can't right. remember what it was. And he so, said I should have seaweed and Brazil nuts. Oh, I thought he said peanut M&Ms. Com- Good no. combination. So I got those. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Yum. Those seaweed things. The so packets? They're what are salt they? and vinegar uh, ones. Yeah, my son goes through them nonstop. Oh. So what is it? Just a piece of dried seaweed? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. But, but there's, there's teriyaki. There's You get them in a little pack. Salt. Like, like crispy. But yeah. I discovered salt and vinegar. Flaky. And Flaky. I don't know if that's what he meant or if I was actually supposed to go and eat sushi. But anyway, I've been eating them. And I went and bought some Brazil nuts. And the... Um, the Coles here in this building has quite the nut selection. Oh, talk Have to you me. gone and checked it out? Clint, you and I love nut chat. I love nuts. It's time for nut chat. Have you been down there? Yeah, they've got a macaroon <laughs> and mini gelato freezer. They do, but they've also got a Little huge nut selection. Cones. Stop it. Hey, did you did you walk past the gelato and look at the nuts? Because there's that pick and mix, there's like pre bag, yeah, so, there's so pre packed. Nut chat. Are we talking freestyle, the freestyle pick and mix nuts? It's freestyle pick and mix. Oh, yes. But then I get a bit overwhelmed with that because well, if you want to like a br- any type of nut, there's yeah. like 15 different flavours. Question. Mm. Question. Pistachio, they're the ones with the shell. They are. Right. Like they're split open like an oyster. Yep. Well, I went to buy Brazil nuts, which I did get, and then I got nut carried away. And so I got macadamias. Oh, oh macadamia. macadamia. You know, macadamia is a premium nut. It's, that it's is a premium nut. Top of the tree. That is, I think that's the king of the nuts. Mm. You try it chocolate coated. Well, almost. Well, the honey roasted's also excellent. I've never I, had that. I just got salted. Honey we might roasted. have to go downstairs and do an explosion. We must go. The honey but, roasted, the toffee <clears throat> ones, the toffee type caramel mm, toffee. Yeah. yeah. Um, there is one know, nut that challenges it. Mm. Talk. What? The cashew. No, cashew's pov. No, no the cashew well, is pov. soft. Look. And delicious. Cashew is mid-range. No, it is not. Cashew, cashew is, is mid-range. It can be elevated. It can also be a bit pov. I reckon it's pov. An oh, unsalted although, cashew. What about oh. a t- taraman almond? A tamarind, tamarind almond. Tamarind almond. Never They're had very one. good, strong. Oh. Mm. Anyway, I stumbled so, across something and I was like... <laughs> was it the peanut? <laughs> this is so lazy. You got your hands on some Brazil it. nuts. I got my Brazil nuts. Oh, yeah. And I got pre-shelled pistachios. <gasps> They have some poor little person down at Coles yeah. that shells them. Just the in, inside That's bits. Wild. Because you what see, do they like? I've I've been trying to cut my nails short, so I don't have I can't and they're they're do just it like not a squirrel. very strong. So I just can't open them. And do then like I found the pre shelled ones. And they're like they're expensive. I didn't realise until after I paid. I can't remember how much it was, but it was a small you know container what? of kernels and I was like, This is worth it because I can't crack the shells at the moment. That, is that the laziest thing you've ever heard? Gale of shame at the pick and mix. No one's no one's putting it on the scales and putting yeah. stuff back. I think you're missing out though because. But I quite like the shell too. But I just yeah. couldn't open it with my do you, fingers. Do you know what? Because the the shell is quite salty, and you can give I that know. a little suck. Do you give eat the suck. shell? You can give it a suck. No, you suck the shell. You always give, suck the shell. Yeah, chuck it in. Give it a suck. Moisten <laughs> it up. 
and Question. then you, you get that you little bit of skin it open. as well. Where do you put the shell? In your mouth? No, no, but then oh. afterwards. Yeah, oh, you have a shell bowl. No, you, yeah, 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 you have a shell yeah. bowl. Or if you're in the car, like an empty bottle. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Empty bottle. I thought you were going to say chuck it out the window. You no. Can't know. Oh, you probably could. It's natural. But no. Do you know the... what I tried the other day? What? Pistachio gelato. <laughs> it always comes back to ice cream, doesn't it? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Doesn't it? It's We're talking very about good nuts. though. Pistachio, pistachio nah. gelato is an absolute game changer. Where'd you get that from? Seven apples. <laughs> yes, I ordered it by mistake. I thought it was mint. <laughs> <laughs> you listening to Nova? Hide and seek. Hide and hide and hide and seek. Nova's two hundred and fifty thousand dollar hide and seek. The search for Jason DeLoren starts soon, Melbourne. Morning, everyone. Yes, we announced it earlier this week. We are about to begin Melbourne's biggest game of hide and seek. It we doesn't are. begin this week, but it does start soon on Nova. Uh, you'll know when it starts because we will vanish from the studio. We will relocate to you'll somewhere. You'll get warning. Yeah, and we'll relocate to somewhere in Melbourne. It will not be a hospital. It will not be a house, and it will not mm. be a school. Somewhere you can hear this show. Everywhere else is fair play. Now, yep. we will live there, stay there, eat there, sleep there, and broadcast from there. Until we are found, $250,000 on our head. And the faster you find us, the more money you win. I'm Devo because Clint's not coming in. You're my, you're my support I've got mixed, animal. I've got mixed feelings. You you're said, my I'm obviously Devo that animal. I won't be there with you, Aaron. We'll get him on Zoom. Quite relieved that I don't have to put up the chase. Oh no, how annoying. <laughs> I packed Uno. We're going to need more than Uno. <laughs> Valium? You should use... I've seen those things on um, Instagram a lot, the people who tape their mouth shut. It's Gags. meant to clear your brain when you sleep or something. Oh, yeah. You just breathe through your through nose. nose. We should put one I've of, seen them. One on Jace. After 6pm and before 6am, his mouth must be taped. Let's not be like that. That's oh. not bad. If we last, like, a few days, if we go over a weekend, we'll be able to watch the footy together. You don't know anything about footy. So you can teach me. Oh, God. So what do you need? <laughs> What do you? What's on the list? Well, well, we've got to be careful. We're doing our shopping list today. Oh no, we've got to be careful here. Sorry, because we. I'm nervous about what we say. You'd left yesterday. Mm. We're in one of the many closed door meetings, right? Cloak and dagger around here. We're using code words and everything like that. Closed door meetings are fine. People behind the closed doors know what's going on. No, someone in the room yesterday didn't know the location, and you went into fine detail about the location. Oh, I did. Did you spill? I had, to, I had to literally cut her off in the meeting. Go, Lawrence, stop. Actually, I was annoyed that you got so stuck into me about that because Clint was in the meeting early doors and he said something that I was like, hee, 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 that's a dead giveaway. And no one picked up on it. But guys, no one attacked Clint. Well, I don't know. So. We, guys, we can't get into conversations oh, no. outside of work with people because things will slip. I oh, know. Okay. I don't talk to anyone. Have you had any? I've had so many people say to me, hey, just tell me where you are and we'll cut a deal. Yeah. No, I've been avoiding people. Right. I'm definitely not telling Paul. He's pretty good with secrets. Yeah, yeah. he's he, great. Yeah, he is, but he'll get socially excited. He'll get too invested and he'll start telling me, oh, no, he'll be like you. Oh, you can't say that. Yeah, oh, no, right. you can't say that. Yeah, right. Oh, you no, might you need gave a, a clue then. You only need you one annoying partner. You might need a bloke on the outside. Pardon? You might need a bloke on the outside just to... What do you mean? Like... Yeah, smuggle paraphernalia in. Oh, oh I'm bringing. Pe- maybe Paul could come in. Bring a plenty. Is there room? Paraphernalia. Oh, what do you? What paraphernalia? <laughs> what paraphernalia are you? Well, just like we need a couple of rosés and oh, yeah, you know yeah, yeah. things what like that. Meals? Are we going to cook together? Oh, like God. eat the same meals? I do we need to walk. agree on? Should I bring a walk? We just can't make too much noise either. Well, do you know what I mean? Know, like, do I don't like, know if a walk is appropriate. Someone could be walking where past are. and I could be, you know, like doing a bloody... Nagi Mahash? Yeah, noodle box, you know, like and Yeah. Is well, there a microwave where we're going? Uh, I'm bringing a microwave mm-hmm. and I'm bringing an air fry. No, I think there's a microwave there. Air, air fry is strong. No, there's no room for that. <laughs> there's an no air, room for an, an air ninja? fryer. It takes up too much bench space. Well, Kitchen ninja? The kitchen. Have you yeah. seen the two drawer air fryer? Oh, they're very good. Oh my you god! Put your chips in one I've drawer. I've got a two drawer air fryer. Have you really? I don't know how to use it though. So you can do it's your nuggets huge. at one temperature and yep. the chips at the other. Yep. That is a game changer. Mm. Brody, that's, that's we're going to need coming. a two drawer no, air fryer. No, there's no room. <laughs> we're not going to be able to swing a cat with all this stuff you want to bring. Well, we don't know. It could be somewhere large. Could be somewhere small. Oh, good point. The game could start at any point. Yeah, bunk beds. What sort of sleeping setup? Uh, there are beds, yes. 
There are bets. All right, you can take all this as clues, but $250,000 on our head. It's the biggest game of hide and seek, <sighs> and it starts very, very soon here on Nova. Hey, uh, good work on the telly last night, Clint. I know you were covering the, uh, the tennis Garros. in France. France, good France, on. France, Paris. Paris. Yep. It was nighttime over there or daytime? I was so confused. It was hard to tell when I was watching the telecast. Welcome back. Clint Stanaway with you. Also, John, joined this morning, tonight, sorry, uh, this morning <laughs> Paris time uh, by Sam and Yelena uh, as we take a look at the uh, the highlights from all.com. Well, when you work 24 hours a day, it's hard I, to tell if it's daytime or nighttime. I didn't know if I was Arthur or Martha. But also, it's confusing because it's nighttime oh, here, yes. morning time there. It it's looks always. terrible in... France yesterday. It was raining. I know. Not much play on the outside courts. No. How do you reckon you're going to go over there during the Olympics? <laughs> in what? Well, you've been like on a health gonna... kick. Are you, are you going to be oh, off the no, champagne be... when you're in France? No, get on the pastries, no, 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 brother. No, no. Get I'm on, on a health kick so <sighs> I can indulge as soon as I get on there. Croissant. Don't fall in love Croissant over there. Croissant and champagne. You come back. No, fall in love. I might fall in love with Emily in Paris. Oh, my God. Oh. I love so every I. character so I. in back, that show. Isn't it? isn't it back? I think there's another season coming. Would I like it? Oh, you'd... Well, you hate everything. No. <laughs> so, no, you wouldn't like That's it. That's not true. I love ice cream. <laughs> I fell in love with, like, the entire cast. Is it like uh, the New Age Gossip Girl? Yeah. Because yes. I love yeah. Gossip Girl. Yeah. It's yeah. very so easy to watch. So and quite funny as well. Yeah, yeah it's right. good. It's really good. You give it who... a whirl. All right. Okay. I'll give it a crack. You know who else I love? Kita Alexander. She is going to be performing at Nova's Red Room. We have your invites. Yes. If you want them, 132410 is our number. Hey, if you haven't heard that album, go and download it. It is such a good album. It's it, like whenever I have it on, I just can't turn it off. It's awesome. You find yourself singing along, Paul's over it because I don't stop singing. Really? <laughs> She's just got such a voice, such a talent. Listen 13, 24, 10, if you would like an invitation to Keita Alexander's Red Room. It is just... It's going to be at Chapel Off Chapel, great location as yes. well. Yes, yeah. That's going to be a big night for and this Lauren team. Lauren will not be singing. I will be. Not on stage. Can't stop me. No, not on the stage. No, in the car park. Oh, we should actually get her up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ruin her show. You know when they go, all right, we need everyone to leave now. Hey, Lars, can you grab a mic, darling? <laughs> I want to take you airborne on board a Virgin flight from Perth to Melbourne. Uh oh. About 30 minutes into the flight, when a passenger thought they would de robe, get completely nude, and run down the aisle of the aircraft. Nudie run. Nudie run on board a plane. However, um, he knocked over a crew member. Oh. That's a no go. Well, actually, that's. Well, so, so he's getting nude. Did so he have the nude. trolley out? I don't believe the trolley was out. Okay. The trolley would have taken him out. Oh, it's yeah. only a small plane. It's only a single aisle. That's three seats, aisle three seats. I mean, if someone's sleeping with their leg out and you go running down with your schlong out, you, yeah. you could trip. <laughs> you can't be getting your schlong out on a plane. No, Absolutely. Schlong Schlong's on in. a plane. Does not belong. <laughs> Snakes on a plane. Good movie. Yeah. Tired of these mother. Um, yeah, you can't be doing that. So they took off from Perth and turned around and had to go back How to Perth. It was angry? only half an hour into the plane. How the angry would you be? Not the same effect as doing a nudie run across the MCG or something where people cheer for you. No one would be cheering. So he got full naked. Full naked. Everything out. Full naked. He was restrained by federal police when the uh, plane landed back in Perth and he was taken off for a psych eval. A guy got nude on a plane I was on from Melbourne to Los Angeles once. Oh. He just kept... Leprechaun producer Jazz just did two laps of the studio in a nudie run. <laughs> God, I love this show. I did not have that on my bingo card this morning, no, guys. He has very small hands too, he's and they were too, he's covering looking, everything. He's been on a health. Well. He's looking good. He's th- you look great, Jazz. You look great, Jazz. Looking good, bro. Oh, oh my! Jim's paying what's off. What's the tattoo on the bum? I don't know. What Can is we the see tattoo the bum, on please? His- 
Bum Jazz, cheek say. Can we see the bum? Jazz, what's the tat say? What does the tat say? That scared the. Does it say Jason me? Lauren? <laughs> <laughs> it says hoosh. Hoosh? Sorry? What? Hoosh. Hoosh. I think it's a warning. Oh, he's what's about to come out. Hang on. <laughs> it says hoosh. Oh, he's puffed. What's hoosh? What's hoosh? Doesn't mean anything in particular. It was just a drunken tattoo after our equivalent of schoolies back home. Is God, hoosh, I love you. Great rig, is, Jazz. Is hoosh Irish for idiot? Great rig. I did not, it see, is now. I did not see that coming. No. Your wife's going to be so proud of you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Can That's we, a video. Can we talk nudie runs? Oh. 13, 24, 10. Oh. Not nudie runs, but where have you been caught in the nude? Where have you been caught in the nude? What about my friend who slept walked in just her G-string, no bra, out of her apartment? Really? Yeah, and couldn't get back in. She had to walk to the local police station. Oh, in the nude. Oh. In the nude, in a G-string. <laughs> she slept walked out and got in the lift, didn't have her keys or anything, and was at the bottom of the apartment, was like, oh. What'd she cover herself with? She, she was on her the... own. She just put her hand across her boobs and walked in her G-string to the police station and said, you've got to help me. I've got no phone, no keys. Imagine the Johnny Hoppers. They'd be like, wow, free her, show. They gave 13, her a blanket. 13, 24, <laughs> 10 <laughs> is our number. <laughs> Where have you been caught nude? Or if you know someone who has, give us a ring at Nova. <laughs> We're talking about where have you been caught nude. Do you know on your iPhone um, mm. there's a folder deleted videos mm. that you need to go and delete the deleted videos? What's that got to do with? Is that where your nudes are? I was filmed the other day by my two-year-old. I was in the shower. My two-year-old just comes in with my phone. I give oh. you the hot tip. He no was... one's hacking your phone for that video. <laughs> Not one single person is hacking anything Gizzle to try and get their up. hands on that video. <laughs> no one. No one. Not no, one we'll person. We'll chuck it on is. our social. Whole city You reckon ads. I just post it and we see if it goes viral? <laughs> it won't. <laughs> uh, 13, 24, 10. Have you been caught nude? He's also opening the front door. He opened the front door yesterday. My wife was in the shower. There was a career at the front door. Great. Good on you, aren't you? Just yeah. helping out. I know. Look at him go. You are on the air with Jason Lauren Clint's here from the newsroom as well. So is our nude producer. He just kept... <laughs> That was Jazz, our Irish producer, getting, out his, little, Jazz. Man, getting out his little leprechaun. Um, we a are man asking. Got nude on a plane. He did yeah. a nudie run on a. Fl- it was supposed to be a flight from Perth to Melbourne, but in a surprise to no one, it ended up being a flight from Perth back to Perth because there was a naked man. Mm. On. Thirteen twenty four ten. Where have you been caught naked? Let's go to the fans. Sarah in Mornington. Good morning. Hi. How you going? Good. Yeah, it's Sarah. so good to have you guys back. Oh, thank you. I'm embarrassed. Embarrassed to tell this, but I will. It Go was for too it. Too good. Hey, 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 safe zone. Time safe ago, zone. I was a junior doctor working up in rural Queensland, so a small community, and I was coming back to Melbourne to see family and friends for the first time, so 21st, so I had to have a fake tan. <laughs> I just finished night shift, and so I was waiting for my tan to dry, having my recharge before I flew home. Mm. And didn't know that the real estate agent was bringing some colleagues of mine over to view my apartment. Oh, <laughs> no. So did they walk in? Out. Yes. What I- did they think of your open home? <laughs> 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 I was mortified and got on the first flight out of there. Oh, so, my God. Yeah. Wow. A real estate agent walked in on me nude in bed once when he decided to bring someone through the house. Remember that? Did That's you right. walk in nude on Rita Aura once? Oh, yeah. Yeah, same house. <laughs> That'll Must get have been you. a nudist colony. That bloody house. First time you. I met her, I didn't realise she was in my spare room. It was when she just started dating Tyka. And I went downstairs to get something out of the spare room. <laughs> Swung open the door and she was like, hi, I'm Rita. And I was like, oh, hi, oh, I'm Lauren. Was she totally nude? Yeah. Starks. Yep. Yeah, anyway. Good on her. Yeah. I mean, Bloody hell, you get Rita or I get my mother-in-law. Let's go to Grace. <laughs> On 13, 24, 10, Grace, uh, who have you seen naked or where were you caught? Hey, guys. I, um, it was actually me when I was in hospital having my last baby mm-hmm. and um, they had me in the birthing pool and I was oh. just hanging out for that epidural. So when they said to me, okay, we can walk back to your room now and get the epidural, I don't remember it, but apparently just I just shot up jumped out the bath and started down the corridor path. <laughs> all, all the, you know, dads with their newborns oh, and just stuff. Just water dripping just off you. 
Yeah, oh just my walking God. to that epidural, the midwife is chasing after me, being like, you need a cover up. Oh, good but, on you, uh, Grace. No, you don't need a cover up. Especially a clean freak in you're, me. You're in the birthing ward. You can be as nude as you like. The first thing my mind goes to is, oh, there's water on the floor now. Yeah, but she needs that epidural. Yeah, you do anything, to but get I hate that when the drill. kids run through the house after they've been on the sp- well. Under the oh, it must be really hard for you when there's water on the floor when your wife's giving birth. Must have been awful for you, Jace. She doing that patronising? <laughs> it sounds <laughs> somewhat patronising, yeah. Jace. It's hard oh, to tell sometimes. sometimes Jace so. was like, Lou gave birth, and I just there was, it was me- there was mess. I just couldn't handle the mess. I was well, like, Dar, can we clean up as we go? <laughs> Once you get out of the shower or the bath. You're not making a spaghetti bolognese, mate. Yeah, come on. But you do, I do tasks nude once you, once I get out of the shower. Like, for instance, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, I got out of the shower. I'm like, oh, geez, I've got to feed the dog. No, you don't no, feed the dog no, nude. No, no, no. No, that's a no. cloth so job. No. <laughs> no. No. I grab the dry food. I don't want to see you leaning over a bowl. No. <laughs> and then I went outside and I filled up his water outside. bowl as well. Outside. outside. It's too cold for that kind of behaviour. In outside. a towel. I've been to your house. Even your bathroom's quite exposed. <laughs> quite too exposed for me, I yeah, agree. Yeah, I was the same line. You in, need to frost those towel? windows. No, nothing. Nothing on. In Melbourne. In, in Melbourne. May. Yeah. You can't be feeding the dog nude. The dog was happy But sometimes about the dog is getting fed. But you know when they're really hungry and they try and yeah, they run might... between your legs to get to the bowl? <laughs> Imagine think... what the neighbours would have thought if they looked over the fence. Yeah. <laughs> We're moving. They might think there's a spare pig's ear up for grabs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they look dry and wrinkly, those things? <laughs> Give the dog a bone. All right, let's go. Nick from Clyde. Oh, it's our aerosexual. Oh, oh, he oh, Nick. Of course, Nick's weighing in on this because well, someone... Nude, nude on a plane. You ever got nude on a plane, Nick? No, never, 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 never. But I'd like to try one time. <laughs> you might need coach. a private plane, Nick. Yeah. Uh, where were you caught? So I was driving from uh, Melbourne to New South Wales and stopped in a motel overnight. Um, had a quick shower, thought to myself, shit, no clothes. Uh, ran outside, the door shut behind me. Oh, no. I could make it to the car. Um, the door locked, and the first thing I could grab was a chair and my hands for the front trying to get to reception and uh, wasn't going to make it. So I seen the pool. I uh, jumped into the pool and yelled out, help. Um, and the guy come out and told me to get out of the pool. It's not open. And I said, well, I'm locked out and I'm naked. Yeah, get me a towel, um, bro. Did he get you a towel and help you out? Give me a towel. He got me a towel and then uh, unlocked the door for me. But I sat there and it was a very, very cold <laughs> night. So you can only imagine. I love that the guy came out and got up him because it was outside pool hours. Don't worry about being naked. Because they're quite strict on that. 8 p.m. Well, that, some, remember yeah. I went to Rome shot. last year in the in the winter break here. We went to Europe. And on our first night, Paul took a sleeping tablet because he didn't want right. to get jet lagged. He wanted to sleep through the night. And he woke up and thought he was going to the bathroom and walked out to the hallway. <gasps> and he was completely nude. Did, did he in, piss in the hallway? No. He, ca- he, like, he realized what he was doing once the door That's was closed. Right, but yeah. I'd also taken a sleeping tablet. So he was banging on the door with the backup. Blackout blind sound, and I thought it was housekeeping, and I was like, "No, thanks." Good oh. to good to know you flew all the way to Rome to then medicate yourself and shut the blinds. Like, yeah. you know. well, no, it was overnight. We didn't want jet lag. We didn't want to be awake at two a.m. Gary, on the only way to do Coliseum. It. Nah, didn't see it. <laughs> Hallway, beautiful. Shut the curtains. <laughs> Thirteen twenty four ten. Hey, uh, Gaza, where we caught nude to wrap us up? Uh, front door at my girlfriend's house. Young and silly, thought I'd deliver flowers naked on Valentine's Day. Uh oh. Front. Front door opened, didn't see my girlfriend, looked down and there was her son. <gasps> oh! We've got a little day out tomorrow, a little family day out. We do. We are off to River for Ward, um, the Sony Foundation. Yep. Going to be... Uh, We're host- hosting a lunch. Hosting a lunch tomorrow. We're going to uh, shake the tins, get the get the rich execs to give money. Yes. Goes to a very good cause. I tried my suit on yesterday. It does. And? <sighs> Just fits. Just fits. I'm fasting today, so it fits more comfortably. It's a fancy lunch, and he You're just fasting asked, for the don't, kids. Don't, don't, he just asked me don't. if he could wear sneakers and a t-shirt. You can't wear sneakers Thank and you. a t-shirt. I was going to go Andrew you G. Might Australian be able Idol to get style. away with. In 1999, <laughs> remember that? Him I'll and... be in stilettos. You can't be in sneakers. That's unfair. You need to wear something mildly uncomfortable. Okay. How how fresh are the sneakers? Oh, I'd, I'd, they're fresh. He keeps because, his sneakers white. Because some people can pull it off. Yeah, but that not not appropriate in that at that lunch a t shirt and sneakers. Not a t shirt. Like an yeah okay yeah right. Yeah, no. some people can do suits with sneakers. I don't think you can do or sneaks. What's that? Oh, sneakers. Just, what the cool kids? Yeah say. right. Gotcha. <laughs>
<laughs> just put on your RM Williams. Yeah, put on just, your yeah, right. Okay. All right. Colored right. shirt. You look lovely, Jace. A coloured shirt. Don't colored, wear a coloured shirt. Colored, oh, colored, colored, colored. Colored. But you can go coloured if you like. Multicoloured number. <laughs> um, hey, uh, it's just gone quarter past seven. We've got a huge show. Got the popo coming in after 7.30. They're bringing in the dog squad. The dog squad. Before... I believe the dogs are in training. Does that mean we can pat them? Play um, with them? I probably wouldn't play with the police dogs, are but they it's up to dogs? you. They, I believe they'll rip your arm clean off. Uh, Loz, you always tell me, get my own GP. Get a family GP, someone you always go back to. Mm-hmm. Do you feel the same about a hairdresser? Yeah. But men are strange because men just go to random barbers. See, well, that's really the thing. Nil. I'm more committed to the barber shop than the actual barber. Yeah. I agree oh, with that. I yeah. see. Yeah, yeah, I go to Uber, but if Marie Uber can't do my hair, I trust any of the girls. Yeah, right. I go to Brothers Wolf in St Kilda. Let's, let's, let's. Men's barbers are weird. Um, Why? I don't know. It. I just. I, I find that whole it, environment intimidating. What do you part mean? of it? I don't know. It's just a bit butch for me or something. <laughs> No, these I don't guys, know. These guys well, aren't really You butch. roll in, it takes 10 minutes, you have a beer. Well, and... no, they're half hour slots. Yeah, well, they are. Mine's they, half no, hour. mine too. Mine too. Half yeah. an hour? Yeah, yeah, yeah Look yeah, at yeah. your hair. Yeah. yeah. What are you doing for half an hour well, with you that You have your hair? beer and you chat. Yeah, yeah. You get your clippers on the sides and you get the texture scissors. Which they take their time Jace these doesn't days. like the texture scissors. Excuse me? The texture scissors. Because oh, it's thinning enough. You don't want enough. to thin it. Yeah. To thin it. yeah. Um, but the other day I went to book and Toby wasn't available, who Tobes. sometimes I go to. Yeah. Big so Tobes. I just did the whoever's available. Yeah. Safe option. Safe option. So it's the same barbershop. They've what got a charger. 55? Yeah, I'm 55, 55 as well. Barber's son in yeah. Glenfrey Road Hall. Yeah, right Some up. of them are like 15 bucks. Yeah, that's just cuts with a cardboard cutout no. of Grant Denyer in the window. No, that's a no from me. In the window. Is Grant doing haircuts? No, they've got cardboard cutouts oh. of him in the uh, just cuts. Yeah, I think the person who owns that just cuts is like a billionaire. Is he? Well, they're doing that's a lot of fifteen dollars haircuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I walk in and uh, the barber shop was no. Oh. <laughs> I walk in. And I'll I'm get like, the Grant Denyer, please. <laughs> point point hair, in the cardboard cutout. <laughs> Can you take nine inches off me? Um, I walk very in, short back and sides. The place is empty. And there's just this one guy who I didn't recognise sitting on the bench. You know, like the bench where you wait. Oh, uh, yeah. And he looked at me and I looked at him and no one said anything. But I'm like, does he work here? Not if he's sitting on the bench, he doesn't work there. Well, that's what I thought. And he just looked a little bit... Lost? Stoned. Oh. oh. Just like staring off into the well, sunset. Well, you don't want him cutting your hair. Well, that's what I thought. And I'm like... Oh, no, hey, um, not the stoner. And I, and I, <laughs> Is there I, not a reception desk that you go up to and go, hi, Jason? No, 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 the barber straight turns, on the bench. answering the phone. Straight on the bench. You're straight on the bench. What, you just walk in and sit on the bench? Yeah. 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 Oh. Everyone knows you. So on that the guy bench. is on the bench waiting for his turn before That's you. what I assumed. So I sat next to him. Yeah. And then I looked at him and he looked at me and then he goes, you're here for a haircut. <laughs> oh, no, I'm here to get my toes tickled. Well, that's <laughs> what do you think I'm doing at the barber? <laughs> <laughs> they do offer the extra yeah. service of the <laughs> tickle. It's quite good. <laughs> the tickle's lovely. Um, and he's like, oh, yeah, you're you're with me. <gasps> and the I stoner. thought, oh, God, I've got the stoner. Oh, no. What was he doing sitting on the bench? He should be sweeping up hair or something. Well, then sure. Toby, the normal guy, arrives and he Toby. walks in and he goes, oh, this is the new guy. He just needs sugar. Sorry? And he went and bought him a chocolate bar. Gave him a chocolate bar, and it was a new lease on life. The guy oh. stood up. Was oh, was the he best, unwell? Was the well? I just, I think he's just. He needs sugar hits now and then. Okay, it was so the best haircut him, I've ever had. Throw him a chocolate bar. They threw him one of those little Reese's pieces things, and boom, he was on best Gibbs haircut I've had. Oh, what's like? I haven't done it this morning. That looks but. great. <laughs> looks glorious. <laughs> well, I put a hat on when I leave. You do that at the barber. Do you? Aren't they offended but that their work nah, is being nah, covered up? No, not at the bar, but they don't care. No. Oh, there's Especially this guy, he was worse. off his head. You sit at the hairdresser <laughs> for four hours and then they show you and you're like, I can't wait to get out of here yeah. and watch oh, this yeah. and do it myself. Well, for blokes, it's like, what do, do we you want... think? Do we like the mirror? You like, oh, I'm like, like, put the mirror yeah. down. I hate it from the front. I'm going to hate it from the back. The mirror is a waste of time. So, like, do you want any wax in it? Oh, and I go, yes. yeah, yeah, why not? And then it just looks awful. Oh, that's No, I don't. I go, I'm going to the gym after this. Don't worry about that. Well, they know you're lying. You're going to the gym? Awkward. 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 That's awkward. Yes, Melbourne. Let's get awkward. Things that are awkward that shouldn't necessarily be awkward happens to the best of us. Uh, yeah. I've been telling you all week, Paul, my fiancé, has been on a lads trip. Lads, 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 lads. Good on him. Um, obviously, the time difference is also completely backwards. So, like, he might call me at breakfast and I'm going to bed and... Um, he FaceTimed me the other day, and I just jumped out of the shower, had my towel around me. So oh. I answered the FaceTime, 
But it wasn't him. It was everyone. And I'm uh, lying on the bed in my towel. Like, why do people do that? See, to me... You can't FaceTime without saying, hey, we're all FaceTiming you. I think you need to ring someone first. And say, do you Engage in the conversation. No, you don't. And then FaceTime. You do not do a cold no. FaceTime. Your cold FaceTime. It's awkward. No, that's... You know, a Even FaceTime. when I see it pop up, I get nervous. And then I'm like, oh, it's Paul. Like, yeah, no. Nah, what's that's... the worst that can happen? And know, I answer it and I'm half nude not, and it's ten of his mates. More often than not, a FaceTime is for somebody to, to show off. Or to, you know, to show off no. their surroundings. No, nah, my friends their... FaceTime all the time just when they're sitting really? on the couch. Yeah. Hey, awkward situation at the servo yesterday. Mm. Filling up the car, mm. walk in, lines building behind me, it's mm. my turn to pay. What pump? Oh. Yeah, you're doing that. Oh, just, just the white one just over there. Over, uh, <laughs> yeah. Is that 12? And they go, the Volkswagen? No. No. No, the big, the four-wheel drive. I think it's the $70. It's the $70 and two cents. And, yeah, and they go, oh, $64. And you're like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And in your yeah, head, you're like, one. no idea. Oh, and, and the crunchy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm doing a lot of flying. Yeah. And look, I think... Like, getting on the plane last has its advantages, right? I love getting on last. But can't these days with luggage. Well, you can't. And here's the thing. Oh, yeah, if you need if overhead space. If you're sitting space. in micro six or seven, oh, yeah, no. suddenly you're having... But it's when you're getting off the plane. Oh, your luggage is down the back. And you have to... Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Can I just get... Can I just get around? Oh, no. If your luggage is behind you, then you have to wait till the end. Which, no, you don't. No, you yeah, wait. You, you wait. And as soon as that. You don't go against the grain. As soon as it goes you can't get, ding. Can't yeah, but you can't. No, you don't. Or oh, people who do too that. Too far freak down. Me out. Like you. No, you have to wait. Clint. No, you have to do. If you're going to get on last and your luggage is up the back, you have to wait. That luggage is gone. You just move on without it in life. You start again. <laughs> just leave it on the plane. Just leave it on the plane. It's done. <laughs> um, you know what I've done twice recently is. Got in a cab instead of an Uber, which is fine. Love, shout out to our taxi drivers. Some of them are great. Some of them are absolute freaks at the moment, though. Yep. Um, and just got out and walked off, and they have to chase you down. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and you're don't. like, oh, no, I've got to pay. Fair evader. And they're like, yeah, they get so. I'm like, sorry, I'm just. Remember, it happened to me. It. Happened to me outside Crown, and then I walked in, tried to get a room, and they said, I'm sorry, I've got no availability. They probably <laughs> thought I wasn't going to pay for it. But with taxi drivers, <laughs> they, get, they get a bit. Um, rancid with you if you say, oh, sorry, I thought you were an Uber. Oh, yeah. And then no. you're like, you make the matter very twice as worse. Very territorial, very <laughs> territorial. I want um, to take you to a wedding. End of the wedding, beautiful ceremony. Couple walk down the aisle, everyone walks back out. When do you go in to congratulate them? Oh, I know, there's so many people oh. trying do to get not, in like, out the like, front of the church. Do I need to let the family go first? Oh, Am yeah, I before do. or after cousins? We're good friends. Depends how close you are. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Just need to get to the front. Congratulations. Mm. Just wait till they come to you. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah. But then they get to the people they want. And then inevitably they move on to the next person pretty quick and you're left like a shag on a rock. 100%. Just standing there. You almost want to join them. Yeah. Speaking of weddings. Thanks for coming. You know, it's awkward. Everyone's doing a wishing well these days, right? Yep. It's just awkward working out how much to put in the car. Oh, because yeah. Because there's no real flat rate. Like, does it no. depend on how, cl- how close yep. you are? Yeah. Or does it depend on what black, it, what kind of wedding it is? Does it depend mm. on where, it, where the wedding is? You also know that they're going to be opening that and judging. Yeah, 100%. Mm. Mm. Lou did a PowerPoint. What do you mean? What sort of, pa- what do you, what do you mean? Oh, like my wife's organised queen, so like she would write in who, gave, ranking. who gave us what. Oh, no, but so you have can... to do that so you can do the thank you. <laughs> Yeah, you have to do the thank you. I thought she meant she wrote a PowerPoint of all her friends and how much she'd give them for their weddings <laughs> based on how much she liked them. Yeah. God, Lauren was a bit of a bitch <laughs> last night. <laughs> you know what? Forty dollars. <laughs> it is it, it like and then you start asking how much did you, how much how much did you put in the oh, wedding? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you don't want to be a tight ass, but and you also worst, don't want to go over the top. If you've sealed your envelope and it's in the well and someone oh, next oh, to you at the table. Putting tables. the envelope in the well is awkward. Oh, oh yeah. what about when you've done it right? Has this happened to you? You've put your money in the card, you've written on the card, and someone goes, Oh, I've forgotten the card. Can I just put it in with yours? And I'm like, but I've put in more. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. now you're adding your hundred bucks yeah. and I've put in three hundred yeah. and now all our names are on the card. Yeah. I don't do I feel like writing cards. in brackets, this much from us, that much from them. <laughs> itemised. Yeah, no, itemised. Hey, uh, I don't share my cards with anyone. It's just gone 23 to 8. Everyone play it cool. The Popo are in the house. This is under the body. You better start talking. Jason Lawrence. Answer me. Probe the Popo. Tell me what you know. Ah.
Yes, Pride the Popo. Oh. We are big fans of the Victorian police. And we've got the cutest police officer that we've ever seen. Oh, oh thanks for oh, that. Whoa. Can't whoa. stop touching it. Can't stop playing with Please it. Please don't touch him. His name is Senior Sergeant Mark Boyson. <laughs> Morning, Hello, Mark. Mark. How are you going, guys? We Mark, are excellent. also very handsome. Oh, yeah, but, sure. Um, Mark has brought with him Riggs, Riggs. the puppy police dog. Is yes. it true? Twelve week old German Shepherd. Has Riggs been named after Lethal Weapon? Riggs and Murta? Yeah, that's true. He's uh Yes. We give the handlers an opportunity to come up with some names and uh we sort of vet them and see how we go and uh yeah, that one passed the muster. Riggs cool. just peed in the studio, guys. We got sure a that's situation. Okay. It could be Clint. Could be me. <laughs> um so Okay, so Riggs is in, when does he start training? He's 12 weeks. Well, he started now, okay. uh, effectively, but it's more, with his age, it's more about the environmental um, training and making sure he stands up to those sort of rigours that we want him to uh, show when he finally uh, gets operational down the track, which would probably be, we're not looking for him to be a police dog for another 12, 14, 16 months even. Mm, right. It just depends on how that development goes. And um, so, Yeah, so there's a lot of development happening now, though. What sort of thing will he be sniffing mm. out? Is he? Like a an attack dog. Not that we don't call him that, do we? <laughs> no, but uh, or is he an airport he's, dog? He's a, no, definitely not. He's a tracking dog, so he'll be used uh, on frontline policing for um, general purpose work. We call it so that'll be tracking for criminals effectively yep, and yep. Uh, we'll train him to uh, look for uh, people. It could also be a search and assist scenario for missing people. It ah. can also be for uh, for subduing. Uh, we've just got to re- you know, the facts are that uh, sometimes there are um, scenarios where we need the dog for siege scenarios, those types of yeah. things. Right. Mm. Say, if, say if Clint's committed oh, a crime. Right? Yep. Yeah. Believable hypothetical. Yep. Yeah. Um, I give you something <laughs> of Cl- uh, Clint's to sniff like his hat. For yeah. example, is that what they do? Do they no, pick up the scent? No, that's a bit of. Um, th- a there are dogs that do scent discriminate like that, and oh. um, so that's probably a lot of um, what you see with bloodhounds and things like that. Yes. And um, so, f- no, it's um, it's about we we do know that they scent discriminate to a point, but it's about most recent human sense. So that is initial imprinting is about understanding human scent. So the dog will will just basically scuff the ground. And once right. the dog indicates that, they get a little reward and it develops from there in terms of to a track, now, say, to indicating property. Say if he sees Clint outside down um, down the street, yep. right? And you're like, that's our crim. Do you let him off the lead and can he bring Clint down? Well, hopefully that uh, is never required, but... Look, that, if I'm the realistic nature of the job is that we do have to train the dogs to do those types of things, yes. And are they, and are they taught to, like, do they, do they bite or they just latch on? To latch on and hold. Oh, Base yeah. Hold. So, yeah. So now, there... German Shepherds are amazing because I had one growing up and it, it could jump over, like, a six-metre fence. Yeah. They're quite... Six metres seems a lot. Maybe not six. Maybe like two and a half metre fence. But they're pretty amazing, aren't <laughs> oh, they? They, they can are like incredible. climb. And we do we do train them to do that. Um, now, we also have other breeds, but probably the good thing about the German Shepherd is they're all-rounder, uh, mm. so to speak. They could, they track, they search, they bite, they do everything we want yeah, them no to offense, do. Yeah, no offence. I'm not scared about a beagle latching on. No, but, <laughs> but our Malinois, uh, which are Belgian oh, yeah. Shepherds, they are far more agile. Um, and we've got a number of them at the moment. We've probably got up towards 10 at the moment. Um and um, they're becoming ma- far more uh, predominant now. Mm. Um, they're used in the military, etc. Yeah, right. uh, yeah. We've sort of moved into a number of those dogs. They've got a f- they're far more agile than the shepherd. Now um, I'll tell you what. While we've got the cops here, thirteen twenty four ten. If you have any questions for the dog squad this morning, mm. thirteen twenty four ten to join us on the air. You were saying it could be sixteen months till he's fully trained. If he passes, he then becomes a fully fledged police officer. Yeah. So. Any rules like us touching you if we touch him, technically we've assaulted a police officer, correct? <laughs> I think... Well, it's for, like that with the horses too, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we prefer... We, we're very um, risk-averse with our dogs in terms of we really... Can, you know, if someone is approaching us, if they ask, more often than not we'll say no because yeah. they're in working mode. Um, but certainly uh, we want dogs that are really... Uh, they can they can be out there and and we can comfortably walk them down the street. Yeah. They're not just going to latch onto somebody. Yeah, gotcha. We don't. We've really got to look at temperament. Temperament's a massive part of uh, mm. of what we're looking for. In we our were dogs. the same when building this show. Mm. <laughs> yeah. What three dopey people yeah. <laughs> put them all together and see what happens? Do you uh, do you grow attached? Oh, without question. I've had a number of dogs over the years, and um, there's no doubt about it. I'm not uh, too proud to say that. I've. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, He's I've cried my eyes out over a couple of dogs oh. that, um, you know, once because of the, that association you have, they're your partner. Because we work by ourselves. So do you so get partnered up and then they're absolutely. your dog? They're your dog for life. Like they Turner live, and Hooch. They live yeah. with us. Um, they live with their families. Oh, um, they come home with you. Yeah. So, so hang on, how, how long would they stay in the service for? Generally speaking, <laughs> I can hear him growling over there. We, uh, What's he found? What's Clink, what's Clink of, got uh, on him? He's biting Lockie, Lockie's shoe our other at this stage. Just a bit of protein powder. <laughs> No, he's found probably, the protein powder. And he's so cute. <laughs> they probably do, on average, around eight years of service, so I then, suppose. And then they retire them. Do you keep them? Absolutely. Oh, so yeah. how many dogs you got at home? Oh, I've only got the one at the moment, but yeah. I'm sort of uh, not in – I'm not chasing too many dogs these days or yeah. behind too many dogs these days. So I'm leaving it to the younger men. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> most cops keep keep the dogs. Oh, without question. Oh, you, well, you couldn't I'm give it away. To, yeah. We're 50 years old next year as a squad. Wow. And – I'm yet to see one person who's never kept their dog. Yeah. Oh, that's nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, because you would spend so much time together. I love when you see those videos about the dogs retiring and they throw them a little mm. farewell party. Oh, I saw yeah. one of the airport dogs the other day did its last service and they dropped from the escalators in the airport like 50 tennis balls and the dogs oh, just I thought you were going to say 50 mad. dogs. No. I, was like, no, I did see that one, actually. That was, was really, really good, wasn't cute. it? was really And I brought in a thing just recently in the last couple of years that when they do retire, we... we frame up a photo and a plaque and that for the dog and the yeah. handler. And I think it's really important to really acknowledge them for what they've done. I mean, they've oh. been in like, – we ask a lot of them, yeah, to be quite absolutely. honest. absolutely. All right, 13, 20, 14, uh, if you have a question to probe the popo, there are so many calls coming through. All right, well, How we'll good. come back and take your calls on the other mm. side of this. Uh, We're we... joined by Senior Sergeant Mark Boyson from the Victoria Police Dog Squad with – Puppy Riggs, who's a 12 week old German Shepherd and that's one day going to save the world. Wondering why he got his name. Hey, Riggs. Yeah. Clip any wrong wires? Oh, uh, no, I haven't done that for a couple of days, no. <laughs> hey, next time, wait for the bomb, the bomb squad. squad. Yeah, yeah come idea. on, it's our job. Lauren, have you seen Lethal Weapon? I have seen Lethal Weapon, believe yes. it or not. I've also seen Police Academy. No. Okay. Different? Yep. Very, you, variation. <laughs> so you have a, is there a Tackleberry dog on the squad? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Tower. I won't comment. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, Senior Sergeant Boyson just turned to me and said, I remember you. Oh, God, where did you and two I cross paths? What music festival? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We ran into each other in uh, the World Cup, Soccer World Cup. Yes, that's true. Russia, yeah. Was yeah. he behaving himself? He was very good, actually, with his, uh, with his film Thank crew. Actually, you, so, the second you yeah. introduced yourself as Senior Sergeant Mark Boyce, and I, <laughs> I bet he did no, no, I was just so. buying a coffee at the time, and <laughs> I think he was doing the same thing. Hey, um, Mark, I just touched on music festivals there. What sort of dogs would you guys use to sniff out, like, firearms, narcotics, money? Yeah, they're, they're our Labradors, so um, we have 15 of those. Uh, and, yeah, they're our detector dogs. Uh, they'll... They're really in high demand. So mm. on any given day of the week, they'll be doing warrants on premises mm. basically every day. They've got a good nose on them, the labs. Fantastic. This might be a stupid question. If you're a dog, you'd be a Labrador, Jason. Absolutely. Would you, though? Could yeah. sniff anything out. Bit dopey. It certainly wouldn't be a whippet. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, well, the pastries come out here in the kitchen, trust me. I'm <laughs> <laughs> um, how do they know the scent? Like, have you got to get them around money and drugs and get them used yeah, to that absolutely. scent? absolutely. It's, it's also to re- uh, so odour recognition, and, ah. and it's just repetition. So you introduce an odour to them, you can get them to find, you know, whatever it is, um, mm. and you just keep introducing that odour, and once they give you that um, impression that they've understood it, they're rewarded. And it's just it, it's compounding from there. Yeah. You continuously introduce that odour, have that odour present, and they're rewarded and they understand it over time. And, and firearms have an odour? Yeah. Absolutely. So you've got um, quite Gun obviously powder. it's a, the, the powder itself, quite obviously. Yeah. The and also the cleaning, uh, the the oils and these oh, types of things. Yeah. Now we're not specifically talking about the metal and the yeah, the, yeah, the, the yeah. wood, etc. Depending on the makeup of the actual firearm, it's all the other componentry around it and the uh, the odors that are associated with a firearm and yeah. if a firearm's been fired. I, um, the, the dogs are gorgeous and they do an amazing job. But are they protected at all? Do they wear protective gear? So our um, general purpose dogs, they will wear a vest that basically covers the across the chest area. Right. Um, it's actually a New Zealand um, development in in this in the protection for the animal. So That's good. They, we do have the ability to put um, some uh, panels into the sides of the mm-hmm. the vest. Um, yeah, to give them added protection. Oh, Absolutely. Good. That's um, good. You can whistle because I can't. Um, for silly people, go to music festivals and think about putting bad things up there. <laughs> uh, dogs, dogs can sniff it up there too. 
They're pretty good. <laughs> it's just a waft about them, you know? Dogs and love sniffing where's, butts at the dog parks. I'm sure they like it at music festivals Where's the too. most, like, where's the strangest place Uh-oh. you've found someone trying to hide something? Oh, you, you, you might have hit on it, but... Uh, yeah, that is strange. People will try all sorts of things. So you probably, I don't know, as far as your imagination can take it. <laughs> <many horror>. <laughs> no, <laughs> nothing surprises you these days. Hey, uh, we have got many calls coming through because people love asking the police questions. Let's go to Philip Island. Colleen, good morning. Do you have a question for Senior Sergeant Hi, Mark Boyson? Um, Mark, I'm just wondering, do the dogs get to come home with you every day as part of the family and then like you, you work with them every day and then when they retire, do they get to live with you as... Yeah, absolutely. And I think yep. that's a really good part of uh, that that bond is that um, our handlers have these dogs from early phase, like is going on with Riggs at the moment, all the way through their career. Uh, and yes, and uh, we're 50 years old as a squad next year. Uh, and we're really proud to say that there's not one dog in all that time that hasn't been Sorry, retired to a family. And do you train, can you train that out of them? Like, because they retire, they've got to sort of settle into a retirement <laughs> life. Can you actually train? What do you mean? If you've got a naughty uncle coming well, over, exactly. you don't want them. Christmas <laughs> time, you know, all things happen at Christmas. And that, it's just really hard for them because it's they're high drive dogs and all they want to do is get into that car and go to work. Yeah. And um, yeah. it is hard for some of them. Um, over time, they sort of wean themselves off it a bit, but yeah. um, you always see that glint in their eye when Uncle they Barry, hear the car keys go. go or oh, yeah. they want to go to work. <laughs> They're all over my uncle's. Yep, I go right. Let's Jack go from Jack. Geelong, good morning. Have you got a question? Yes, I do. Good morning, everyone. Um, so once you've finished your training, how long does it take to actually be um, someone that's sort of got the dogs? And what are some of the things that you would actually do to kind of get that sort of training? So... Riggs is an example. He's starting off now. It's more around the environmental, so making sure that he can stand up to the rigours of being basically exposed to anywhere we take him, um, noises and also, you know, in dark areas, tight spaces, oh, yeah. all those mm. types of things. He's doing a good job in the studio yeah. so far. He's peed once and done a poo on the carpet, uh, so he's yeah, fitting he's... into this environment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he shamed himself, unfortunately. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not the first person to do it in the studio. <laughs> but no, we develop from there. So it's over time we just continue to build up the disciplines that we want from him, and that's mainly for him to use his nose for tracking. Um, and it's anything that's scent bearing after that. So it's all about uh, finding uh, dis- discarded pieces of evidence. Uh, but also then we've got to obviously understand that the dog has courage. He's really got to show that as well. Right. Um, so the dog can respond to a number of scenarios where the expectation is he's got to protect the handler and do his job. And that could be about to subduing somebody. There's a lot involved to understand that dog from 12 weeks of age, as Riggs is, um, we're not asking or putting him under a lot of pressure until he does hit that at least 12, 14, right. 16 months. And that's why it takes so long because you, you've got to yeah. really let the dog grow, how, so yeah. to speak. How do you know when he's onto something? Like I've heard the dogs at the airport will sit next to the luggage. And you know what? They're all different. They're all yeah. unique in the way they do it. But you, as a handler, you are looking for classic indications and it's about... Like, the, is it barking? It's body language. There'd it? be no barking with the, these dogs. Uh, it's about head movement. It's about changing in in, um, in his posture and the way yeah, he looks right. to mm. you as a handler. Because we run off a ha- we run off a long lead. Yeah. So we'd be 10, 15 metres behind the dog. He's in a harness and we're tracking along with a mm. long lead and we're casting him across an area to try and understand or see a change in behaviour. Right. Well, and that's why we you work. have to know the dog so well, Absolutely. Right? And yeah. we might borrow some of them for the kids at Westfield. You know, when the it's kids run idea. off at me at the shop. 15 idea. metre lead? Yeah, it's the 15 harness. metre lead. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Jackie and Geelong, just to wrap things up. Jack, what's your question for the popo? Uh, it was just pretty much more like the training as the, as the police officers, what you need to be... Uh, doing to actually be a dog handler like what do you go through once you've been oh, you academy? go through the academy yeah absolutely general so, duties for what four years you were saying to me? we want to we want a minimum of that um and it's really just to because we're going to ask them to work on their own uh be out there making be good decision makers so they've got to have that really good background yeah, right. in policing and understanding of the role before we put them into this because this is a completely different dynamic now we're yeah. asking them to perform yeah Oh. Lockie here is pretty fit. Have a look it at him. It is huh? absolutely fascinating. Isn't it? Yeah. We love the Victorian Police. We Dog do. Squad Thank doing you an amazing for coming job. in this morning. Mark, you've nailed it. Good job, sir. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Good luck, Lockie, with your new pup that you've got on the way. He's bloody adorable, isn't he? And Riggs, you're so cute. Look at that floppy little No, I was no. talking about Riggs when I said he's adorable. Oh. Yeah, Lockie is too, but yeah, more the dog. <laughs> here we go. One question can win you... 
$5,000. Just ask Alison, who joined us to play earlier in the week. All right, Alison, $5,000. What animal's milk is pink? Oh. Hippo. Done. She's, She's done, done it. it. She's done it. Easy as that. Five thousand dollars. Well, let's see if we can give away some more cash today. This morning, playing from Hampton is Kiara. Good morning. Good morning. Oh my gosh, Kiara, you've got my dream job, dog walker. (laughs) Oh really? How many dogs are you walking this morning? I've got five in the van, and they're getting a bit antsy. Okay, the dogs want to go to the park. Is it one of those vans like in Dumb and Dumber where it's a giant dog? (laughs) (laughs) No. Okay. Okay. Is this not your dream job? This? Yeah. No, I'd rather be a dog walker. <laughs> I was at the dog park yesterday and I was just so happy. I mean, yeah, right. I don't know if I'd like it in winter, but it was 19 degrees <laughs> yesterday. I was in shorts and I was just watching the dogs run and I thought... I could see you with a bum bag full of kibble. <laughs> what a life. We just had the police dogs in here. You saw me with the dogs. I love them. She does that now with me to get me to meetings. Come yeah. on. Come on. Um, Here's a pretzel. Okay. $50 question, which is easy. $500 question, which is medium. Or you want to roll the dice and go for 5K. What are we thinking? I'm thinking the 500. I'm not that confident on a Wednesday. All right. $500. Well, I've question. seen today's $500 question. I think it should be a $50 question. Oh. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. You ready? You get it's asked easy. one question. You get three seconds to answer. Are you ready to go? Yep. Here comes your $500 question. The Daintree Rainforest is located in which Australian state? Three, two, one. New South Wales. Oh! No, it's in Queensland. Kiara. Kiara. No smacko for you. It's over 135 million years old. It is the oldest rainforest in the world, they say. It's like north of Cairns. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's over 1,200 square kilometres. Many people travel there to visit the Daintree Rainforest. I'm so sorry. Isn't that where the forest meets the ocean? It's one of the only places in the world. Hey, uh, thank you for giving it a crack, mate. Have a great day, okay? Thanks, guys. You too. Okay, bye. We've got lots of lovely swimming holes up there. Been swimming. Yes, it's beautiful, the Daintree Rainforest. Yeah, no crocs. Oh, crocs. there'd be crocs. Oh, there'd be, yeah, there'd be yeah, crocs. yeah. Upstream There'd a be everything in there. Is anacondas? You, I reckon there'd be anacondas. Oh, <laughs> Would J-Lo be there? She was in anaconda. Huge crocodiles. It is just Huge J-Lo. anacondas. <laughs> just, oh, that's a great movie. Just I gone. love J-Lo. 21 past eight. Do a leap and now on the other side of this, there is a cafe here in Melbourne that is doing something which is going to fire you up. Outrage here in Melbourne. Dot com. <laughs> you. Outrage.com.au. What's happened? Outrage in Melbourne at a cafe because a punter has gone in and done something that we've all done so many times before, Mm -hmm. purchased a beautiful muffin. Oh, I hope it was white chocolate and raspberry. White chocolate and raspberry. What's better than a white chocolate and raspberry muffin? Nothing. A warm Oh yeah, white with chocolate. icing sugar on top. What's wrong? Especially if it's not fresh. If you oh, nuke it, exactly, it'll. It's it'll, always fresh once you put it in the, the microwave. Chocolate it'll gets moisten a little, it. A little melty. So the muffin seven dollars. It's the muffin man. Seven the muffin bucks, man? which is I the mean, muffin man. <laughs> seven dollars. Do you know the muffin? man? I know the muffin man. <laughs> seven dollars is probably about right. Probably. Seven I mean, bucks, it's yeah. up the spinny end of a muffin, but it's probably about right. How much? Mm. Seven dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. issue. Is the extras in this case the extra dollar this punter paid just to get that muffin warmed up? No, no, that's part no. of the price. That is part no. of the price. So a seven dollar muffin becomes an eight dollar yeah, no, warm no, no, no. muffin. So what did they charge you if you have toast instead of bread at this cafe? Well, they just added it to the bill without telling him. Oh the, yeah. the, the, the warming fee. No, that's a hard. No, no. that's not on. No. Especially when you're paying, for, he paid for a coffee as well. So it's a, it's almost like a meal deal, a coffee and a yeah, muffin no, that's, meal deal. That's not right. The that's ridiculous. Should be warm. No, you can't be doing that. God, the bloody guy. Stuff like that makes me angry. Guy at the Seven Eleven up the road from me on Bluff Road, corner of Bluff and South. There you go. If you're a tradie in the area, he warms up their lunches for them in the microwave. Why can't they warm it up themselves in the microwave? Well, you know, he lets them. Oh, yeah. He's not physically doing no, it. Like that, that microwave is there oh, for... Oh, they don't purchase. buy their lunch no, from they're the coming in. they're coming in with their leftovers and using the well, microwave. You see, that's good community spirit, Great. isn't it? Great. Now, you can't be charging a dollar to heat a muffin. Absolutely not. Not when the muffin's $7. Where do you sit on um, public holiday fees? Oh, yeah. oh and I get it at the Sunday moment. Fees. I, I, get, I, I get it, it. Yes, because... 
it like it, things are just going up and up and up and up. Well, some, sometimes on weekends you go to your cafe to get a, a latte. <laughs> I don't like that. Extra ten percent. What? What? Just on a no, Saturday. No, no. Just a lot of Saturday. A lot of them are rolling out weekend. Oh, surcharges. Please, yeah. yeah. I don't mind a public holiday surcharge. That's fine. I, I'm. A warming tax is outrageous, and I think as Victorians we should protest. Yeah. Stand up for ourselves. We. What do we want? Warm muffins. muffins for free. When, when do, do we, we want them? them? Now. <laughs> Get your who, black cards out, guys. Because who do we know? The, the muffin, muffin man. man. The he muffin can. man. The muffin Although man. we do pay for dumb things sometimes. Sorry, I was telling you before about me getting the uh, pre-shelled pistachios that I paid extra for. Oh, That's yeah. dumb. Was That's it, dumb money. Is it dumb or is it lazy? <laughs> or both? Dumb money. <laughs> I had a thumb issue and I wasn't doing well with the pistachio nuts with the shells. You got stumps at the moment. Mm. <laughs> Can't open the yeah, shells. Anyway. How good's a muffin stump? <laughs> Thirteen. I eat the stump of the muffin first and then eat the top at the end because nah, that's so the best I. bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. I go the opposite. Thirteen twenty four. Sometimes 10. I just eat the top and leave the stump. <laughs> Thirteen twenty four ten is our number. Do you want to run with dumb money? Dumb like money. That. So you pay extra to get your nuts pre-peeled <laughs> in a cost of living crisis. Well, I had a thumb issue. I couldn't. I was really struggling opening my pistachios, and my doctor had said I needed more nuts. Show me your thumbs. Yeah, they're, they're, they're a bit big. stumpy. No, yeah, they no, they're, they're stumpy. not there's, stumpy. Yeah, there's, there's no stumpy. sharp edges no, on my, that. My nails are a bit soft Give at the moment. Give us another look. Are they swollen? No, I've got lovely hands. How yeah. dare you? You're not de nutting anything oh, with no, those. She's got but my nails fingers. are a bit brittle at the moment, so I was struggling with the pistachio oh, stumpy shells. <laughs> I've uh, got lovely hands. How dare you? Stumpy Clinton, I want to hear from you this morning. 13, <laughs> 24, 10. Dumb money. Some sucker out there is paying a dollar to get muffins warmed up. Nah. Old Stumpy here is getting her nuts pre peeled. What are you dropping cash on, Melbourne? We are talking dumb money. 13, 20, 4, 10, there's a cafe here in Melbourne who now wants to charge a dollar to well, heat up. Well, not wants to. They are charging a dollar. To heat up your muffin. You can buy a muffin. If you want it hot, it's an extra dollar. What's the dumbest thing you've paid I for, Melbourne? I think you two pay for something that's a little dumb, hmm. but you get into me for not paying it because you say that I'm a tight ass, and that is Uber Eats priority. Always. It comes that's up how much you money. save. It comes up how much you save. No, 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 no. You're talking about that Uber One thing. No, I'm talking about getting the food first. Priority. Oh, you Always ha- pay you for have that. To. Why do you have to? Because otherwise... Otherwise your dinner's cold, bro. Yeah, no. your fur's and going you over watch. to Craigieburn before it gets to Hampton You East. watch Michael on his little bicycle ride bit of, bit of, bit of. straight past your house to someone else's only to come back again. I think if you're not going to pay for it, don't get it. I agree. Go I pick it up yourself. Impatient. No, yeah, we're, we're hungry. Waste of money. No, it's not a waste of money. Right, let's go to some Remember effort. when I tried to pay for air in my tyres? Yeah, you did too. Oh, you did. That's <laughs> and right. And the guy at the petrol station was like, are you kidding? And I was like, no. Apparently you have to in the UK. Remember we got some oh, calls. Yeah. Uh, let's go to Samantha in Q. Morning, Sam. What's the dumbest thing you paid for? How are you guys? We're good. Good. How are I'm you? I'm totally on board with the, um, I would not pay a dollar for the warmed up muffin. Yeah, that's <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Not. But what have you paid for? Uh, I did get my tyres replaced and, you know, you pay the fee at the end for the tyres and the guy asked if I want um, tyre insurance to cover just the tyres. <laughs> what? Um, tyre insurance? And I said yes. <laughs> yeah, well, in case you get another flat tyre. Is that yeah, dumb? No, I would do well, that it too. It is. Why? Because what are the chances? You could pay, you could spend your whole wage on insurance, all different little silly Yeah, insurances. little add-ons. Just, no, I, just I, I, live I, I, insur- a little. I'm, I'm an insurance babe. I insure Live a everything. Little. Really? Yeah. Do you I've upgrade with the hire car? The do you dog, upgrade the to car, the top? The house. Oh, yeah. Do you pay the insurance on the hire car? The top insurance? Always. Nah, yeah. that's for suckers. Nah. Travel just... insurance always. Well, if you're going to Brisbane, do you get travel insurance? <laughs> Maybe not Brisbane. What about the hire car when they say, how's a $5,000 excess? And I go, yep, yeah, that's fine. I'm that's the same. No worries I'm me. I'll deal with that if it happens. <laughs> and my God, will I bitch and moan if it does. <laughs> You know what my wife got done? My um, wife? What'd my she do? wife, when she got the car, paint protection. Oh, yeah. I would do that. Yes. No? Like, the car's not that flash. Like, <laughs> we'll get touch-up paint. Yeah. Um, the thing is, I'd pay for paint protection, then if the car got scratched, I'd never actually take it in and get it repaired. Good All right. Point. Naya in Pakenham, good morning. Have you paid for something dumb? Yes. So I have a toddler who goes through clothes like nobody's business and Mm -hmm. he leaves these pesky stains. So I started paying my neighbour to actually wash dry, iron and fold them. And so 
that's something done with through those you people. Have a, you have a laundry service next door. <laughs> that's neighbor. amazing. Can you send that. me the address? Yeah. I, How good. I originally thought you were going to say. I don't think that's dumb. I think that's smart. Yeah, smart I originally mate. thought she was going to say, you know, toddlers ripped through so many clothes. So I think it's dumb that I clothe them. Mm. I, I spent, go au natural. I spent dumb money buying like cute designer outfits for my brother's brand new Silly. baby, first last, niece in the family. They last she, one week. Well, some of them she never even wore, and now she's too big for. Exactly. Oh yeah. I got a mate of mine. I bought, I bought winter stuff, thinking she'd grow into it, and she was out of it. Here's never a tip. even wore it. Mate of mine, uh, Mark from Two Brothers, uh, Two Brothers Beer. God love you, Mark. He's just about to have a baby. I was on the phone to him yesterday saying zips. Don't get buttons. Always zips. Oh. Always zips. How do you feel about shoes for babies? Because I bought her some cute little, like, shoes, and they're like, Lauren, she doesn't walk. What does she no, need exactly. shoes for? She just wears just socks. Just kicks them off. It's stupid. They're so cute. That's Pulls dumb. them off and throws That's them on the ground, money, and then you got one it? shoe. A friend of ours bought some Air Jordans for Archie. They're pretty cute. cute. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't walk. Oh, he's never worn them. All right. Oh, um, let's go to Hawthorne. Sally, dumb money. What do you drop cash on? Hi. <clears throat> Can you hear me? Sorry. Yep. 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 Hi, Sally. It's your okay. moment. This is it. Hi. This got, is um, the moment. <laughs> Sorry. You butchered the moment, Sally. <laughs> Come Good on, to chat Sally. to you. Don't. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. I'm little, joking. little wine bar in Hawthorne. You go in and you're eating and you choose a bottle of wine off the shelf. And as they're opening it, they tell you, by the way, there's $20 corkies for two of you oh. to use their glasses. $20. This is a new thing because they're bottle shops that have become wine bars. So it's obviously cheaper to buy it from a bottle shop than a restaurant. Yep. But if you want to dine yep. in, I'll then drink they it charge from the you. bottle. Yeah. Is this, um, I'm, I'm a former Hawthorne guy. Is this one down towards Coles? Uh, no, uh, Auburn Road, just near Auburn Road. Yeah, a lot of wine shops are doing that now. If they're wine shops that turn into bars, you have to, you can either take it away and it's cheaper or you pay more to dine in. Can you bring a glass? No, so that, like, and you can't bring your own bottle opener either. Just get a straw. Yeah, God, I'd be like, I'll open it. You, you sit down, Barry. Take a load off. Yeah, well, then they've got to pay for wages for the people being in the wine well, you bar. You can't afford your cheese. Serve you. Hey, uh, it's just gone 18 to 9. We're going to check your run to work latest in news. Hey, the uh, first slide has been announced for the big freeze oh, this yes. year. And this bloke's going to make a racket. It's Absolutely. going down. Absolutely. One we'll of reveal, my faves. We'll reveal who it is on the other side of this here on Nova 100. Some footy news. I guess you could call it footy news, but oh, yeah. the great Neil Danaher has just made his first appearance of Freeze MND season to announce, alongside his beautiful daughter Beck, the first slider to go down the slide during the Collingwood and Melbourne Kings birthday clash on June 10. Here's the, uh, here's the big reveal. He is the golden boy of tennis. He has won the US Open twice. He's reached world number one, and he's been a finalist at Wimbledon twice as well. We know this career is just all a warm-up leading up to this big moment as he slides down into the pool at the big freeze. It is the proud Queenslander Pat Rafter. Patty Rafter. Patty Rafter. I love Patrick Rafter. Although it's a bit of a cop-out for him because he loves a nice bath. Oh, Didn't he? He's, he's like an ice bather. He's got, I think he's got one at his house in Does Byron. He? Didn't he teach you, t- you sign up for tennis lessons with him and then you yeah, just go t- around there and get on the Venos? Yeah, he tipped me into a uh, cardio tennis coach up in Byron um, and I went to the wrong one and I was like, Paddy, this guy's not for me. And he goes, oh, no, that's not the one I said. And I said, well, he's cancelled today. And he said, well, I'll take you and the girls. And he nearly killed us. <laughs> he, yeah. he thought we were fit like athletes and we weren't. And then um, the old cardio tennis at Paddy Rafter's house just turned into mm. champagne and tennis. So, and he used to make us almost vomit because we'd sometimes drink champagne before we played tennis. Oh, uh, you don't want to put that in the we water bottles. We'll do the champagne after the tennis. The big question is, what will he be wearing? Maybe not a lot because he was a Bonds underwear oh, he was model. Too. Maybe yes. he goes still down and he's very does. fit, Paddy Rafter. I'm so excited about the big freeze. Such a good game. Such a big day of footy. It's amazing. Yep. Patrick uh, Rafter, there you go. They, so they all dress up as something, don't they? Yes, they, they do. do. So this is the first reveal. And usually there's a theme, so I wonder what the theme could they, be. They normally keep it quiet. Theme's always a surprise. It was superheroes last year, or villains. Yes, it was. was it villains? Villains, I think. Mm. Uh, it is. Anyway, Pat will love it. Yeah. Um, loves getting his rig out. Loves getting in the ice. Sorry, Benson, my bad. Uh, you always nine... cut him off at the end there. Well, Benson. he drags it out, to be honest. If only like... we had a computer in front of us that told us where the song ends. <laughs> That's good, because that's something you would say to me. And I just gave you a taste of your own medicine. Were you proud of me for that, Clint? I'm that proud of you for that. Really I'm, good. I'm actually proud. He actually now, said it to you this morning. If only there was a computer in front of you that told you the too. caller's name, he Clint. He did too. You are you know blossoming what? into a mini-me. I could not be proud. No, I'm not. 
<laughs> much sharper than you. <laughs> uh, it You're is. You're going to be in a filthy mood now. Jace and Lauren. Oh, with what's you. new? <laughs> More Seriously, I'm conditioned to it. Jason Lauren with you this morning. Clint came along as well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> tops of 19, we are going for it is 12 at the moment. All right, kid stars. Child stars. Now, I think people are being quite unkind. No, it annoys me. <laughs> it annoys me. I think people are being unkind to Kim Kardashian's daughter, North West. Have you seen her Lion King performance? No. Okay, the first thing I would say, I think the costume is a bit pathetic. It's it's so bad. She's just in a yellow tracksuit with what looks like a feather duster over her head. That's yeah, a like one of those mops get... they sell on the shopping channel. Yeah, that it came So up. for those who aren't familiar with the Kardashian family tree, Northwest is the eldest child of Kim and Kanye. Isn't Kanye's wife out here at the moment? Yep. Shout out, Bianca. Could be listening to us this morning. Good morning, morning. Dave. Um, and it was at the Hollywood Bowl. Like this is where the performance was of the school concert of The Lion King. Uh, and she had to perform, I Just Can't Wait to Be King. Do you want to have a listen? Not really. I love it. I, I love it. It's, it's that stop last bit. That. No, play it again. No. Just can wait to be king. Why has she got the role? She's I'm having not sure. a great time. Why has she got the role? She's having a great she's time. She's got the role because she's Kim and Kanye's daughter. <laughs> so you're you're going to have to wait a little bit longer. Wow. That's Kanye no, that's was there off. watching. That's off. Chris Jen was there, Courtney Kardashian, Travis Barker. Jeez. No, I thought she was very good. And you know what? When you're a kid, it's all about enthusiasm. You know, she well, no, no, no. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Peek behind the parent curtain here. Mm. To their face, you have to be encouraging. Do you think Kanye was like, oh, God, I am a rock star? I thought she'd be better. Yes. Do you think? Yeah. No. No, watch enthusiasm. this. Enthusiasm. You played a great game out there today, mate. One of your best. I'm so bloody proud oh, of thanks, you. Oh, thanks, Dad. Yeah. Thanks, he, Dad. Honestly, what a waste of fuel. Like, why Is that what even... you're saying behind the scenes, BTS? Uh, just sometimes. Is that what you say about your kids? No, no, no. No, my kids had a ripping basketball game oh, last week. Oh, did they really? <laughs> it does remind me of this. What does your kid suck at? Great job, champ. Nice try. We can only do this post 9 a.m. after the kids are at school. Hey, Dad, are you going to come next week and watch me? I will be there. With... Oh, I've got a work thing on. Oh, oh. I but remember my grandfather. <laughs> Papa Bo used to tell me I was brilliant at calisthenics all the time. Oh, yeah. He was blind. <laughs> he was actually blind. And he'd go, you were the best on the stage, and I'd be so happy with myself. You're very flexible. And my brother would be like, you know he's blind. Maybe you can hear he your feet see. hitting. Oh, <laughs> listen to that dismount. You listen to her on the pommel horse. See? You just got to encourage kids. They I'm, believe the hype. Lauren, I'm going to show you. Encourage them to their face. I'm going to show you a bit of honest parenting here. Melbourne, let it rip. <laughs> 13, 24, 10. You love them, but what does your kid suck at? I know Loz doesn't think we'll get calls. I'm telling you now, parents, we, we love our kids and we want to encourage them to, you know, and, and push them and stuff like that. But we're also honest with ourselves. Mm. You can remain completely anonymous because we don't want them to yeah. hear it. I think this is how Paul talks about me. When I cook dinner and he's like, that was lovely, love. And then I leave and he's like, that was mm. so bad. 13. You're an adult, though. <laughs> But adults can be enthusiastic and still suck at things. I guess you're right. <laughs> 13, 24, 10 is our number. Look at the phone oh, lines. Oh, mums and dads in Melbourne. What does your kid suck at? My God. The phone lines have just lit up like a Christmas tree. No names. No names. Just what they suck at. Nah, name and shame. 13, 24, 10. Now is the time to vent. Parents of Melbourne. Uh, we are asking, it. what does your kid suck at? Now, look, you, you love them. We're encouraging them and all that sort of stuff. But, you know, you, you can be honest. Mm. All right, let's go to the phones. 13, 24, 10 is our number. What does your kids suck at? Bettina in Bentley East, good morning. Is there something your daughter thinks she can do? She likes to think that she can sing. Um, <laughs> and I'm a singer and so is my hubby. And I think, yeah, it's, it's really hard. Like, we love her so much. Yeah, but she's <laughs> um, terrible, is she? Well... 
We yes. just like to hit the high note. It's that real mm. attitude high note. And yeah. Screechy. You just think, yeah, no, you just haven't got it. <laughs> hey, Bettina, if you if you can sing, can you hit a high note for me? Can you oh, sing a song? Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> come on, if you if you can in your kid, come on, <laughs> good call. You, you got to give us kids. a performance. Oh my god! Sing it, Simba. I think she's pretty decent. That, yeah. yeah, she's better. a bit distorted with she's the phone line. Mate, but well done, Northwest. Bettina. I actually thought she was a bit of a stage well, mum. I, I can't stuff. believe she just broke into <laughs> Wow, Jules, can she just oh, like, in the car singing? <laughs> but as you, I can't believe she broke into it. Of course, and you would I did been, it. Yeah, you would have been begging for an opportunity. Well, if you're going to can your kid and you say you're good at it, you've got to do it too. She was very good. Let's go to Altona North. Emma, what does your kid suck at? Uh, he's terrible at soccer. Mm, yeah, right. <laughs> and do you spend oh, all your Saturdays there in the oh, rain God. watching him play? Uh, it's, it's, it's an hour twice a week in the evenings, and then it's an hour on a Sunday. And, oh. yeah, he's, he's just oh, How he's bad terrible. are we talking? He, um, he played for the under-7s last year when he was under-7, and then they all went up to the under-8s. And about three weeks before the season properly kicked mm. off, they were like, we're sorry, he's got to go back down to the under seven. Oh, and he's how eight. That, how does that make you feel, Emma? <laughs> going over that... and he's watching the plane. He's picking his fingers. Oh. He's looking in the wrong direction. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> As an English woman who, you know, loves all things round ball, how does that make you feel? Are you just overwhelmingly disappointed? Um... At first I was. I had hopes and dreams of, like, summer camp in Europe and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> if you pay for it, they'll yeah, take don't. anyone. Yeah, you're not Just going to pay that. the fees. Might not get a scholarship. Let's head to Belgrave. Sarah on 132410. What does your kid suck at? Hey, guys, um, she can't tell the time. She's 13 and <laughs> just cannot do analogue clocks, clock, but um, digital, not much better. Oh, oh, I was going to say, she's strong on the digi. No, she, the Google Nest Hub, she just sets alarms. If I say we're going to leave in 10 minutes, she'll set the alarm for 10 that's, minutes. But that's mm. a problem. That's And you'll be able to vouch for this too, stuff. Sarah. Kids aren't. They're just asking Google. They need the old flick yeah. and flack watch. That's like, how I learned. I even watch... Uh, What's a flick and flack? I don't know. It was like a kid's watch. Like and a swatch like, watch. The flick was the minutes and the flack was the hour and there was like a book that came with it that taught you all the different things. I cannot believe. It was a Swatch Watch. It was owned by Swatch. There's a whole Swatch Watch shop at Chadston. Mate, they're coming back. people line up to get the limited edition Swatch Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. They're back. Them and the Casios. What happened to baby G's? Nah. With the light on them. Oh, I always wanted a baby G. Never got one, but I got a fake one from the Queen Vic Market and I was a baller. I had the big metal. I thought I was living. I had the big metal. Nixon from Surf, Dive and Ski. Oh, yeah. She was heavy. Yeah. Yeah, the fossils were heavy too. Fossils were. The fossils were heavy. I love a fossil. Do you? I did. I could see you with a fossil. Yeah. You are one. Let's go to Libby in Sunbury. Libby, what does your kid suck at? Libby. Libby, we got you there? Uh, hello? hello? Hello, Libby. Can you hear me? Yep, yeah, yeah, got, got you, Libby. Come awesome. on, Libby. Come on, Libby. All right, I have a 26-year-old daughter and she still sucks at catching a ball. <laughs> Oh, well, guess what? Oh, no. Jace is 42 no, yes. and he can't throw, so they could make a very nice team. Oh, my they God. should play, play catch. Throw and catch. <laughs> oh, my God. Can we get It'd Libby? It'd be like Dumb and Dumber. Let's get Libby in and we'll do a video of me throwing her the ball and yeah. seeing if I can even get it in her vicinity. That'd whether be she can it, Libby, it. did she ever try and play ball sports at school? Uh, she did, and she still tries to <laughs> catch a ball, and it's arms and legs everywhere. It's funny. Mm, yeah, right. <laughs> Baby giraffe. Does that make you yeah. feel confident, like when she's going to weddings, that she's not coming home with a bouquet? A hundred percent. Look, yeah. she's good at many other things, so I'm still proud of her. Oh, well, that's it, Libby. You can't be good at everything. No, you can't, Lauren. I'm just trying to work out what Jace is good at, because well, while you just hung it on Libby, saying, come on, Libby, it's your turn to talk. We can't hear you. You didn't have a volume up, did you? Tell the truth. That was on you. That was on me, Libby. I apologise <laughs> for that. Thanks. Making me look silly. No. Yes. That, that I'd love to unfair. empower kids to tell us what their parents suck at. Oh, yeah, that's quite good. Let's just flip it next week. Just reversals. I like that. That's fun. Can we do that when kids are in cars Eight on the way to school? in the school? morning. What just, are your parents terrible at? Do you at? want to start with my kids? Just I'll get vent. them to record something. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they'd, they'd be, we need three hours of the show. Yeah, we're going to need more memory on that phone. Hey, uh, guys, that is it. We are getting out of here for the day. Yeah. 
Thanks for listening, Melbourne. Today has been an absolutely ripping show. It's been a lot of fun. It's going to be um, a beautiful, sparkling day outside today. Jace, um, how yep. warm is it going to be? Tops of 19 today. The sun is out. But if you want to see the moon, uh, the video of our producer doing a nudie roll <laughs> uh, will be posted tonight. Jace and Lauren on socials. You can go and check it out on the gram. Clint and I are off to the You Can Centre today at uh, the Peter McCallum Cancer we Centre. Are. We're going to go meet some families and some yeah, kids today, which will be nice. Beautiful patients. I have to get my face scan read. What? After the doctors. Yeah, I got the, the CT scan. Oh, yes. From the tooth out. Oh, yeah. The infamous tooth. So what are they doing now? They're going to tell lift. me how cooked I am. No, oh. fa- I hope a facelift. I'm going to be Could in there. do with one. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> I scared Lauren the other day. Her face did I not move. I saw that. Yeah. Wasn't it unbelievable? Yeah, I couldn't tell if she was smiling, frowning, or she just shit herself. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you for being a friend. for daddy. Jason Lauren. Jason Lauren. Wake up feeling good. On Nova 100. Jason Lauren. Follow them on socials. Nova.